Welcome back to the channel and welcome to this little beauty. This is the 2024 Fireblade. Now, this is a bike I've ridden all generations of Fireblade. Actually, no, I'm telling a lie. I haven't ridden the 954 version. I've never ridden the 954 version of the blade. And there may be a couple of the others that have slipped through, but I'm a massive Fireblade fan. I used to have a Fireblade, as many of you will know. But this is the latest 2024 version of the blade this is a 214 horsepower motorcycle let me say that again 214 horsepower the blade has been through some changes for this year this is the rrr sp version so this is 23 and a half thousand pounds and this is the own this is the cheapest version of the fire blade you can buy these days there is also as a carbon version but I think that's about 26 and a half. But they're only doing the RRR. They're only importing that on the UK this year. But uh, this is new. This has got slightly restyled, new wings. It's also got a split throttle body now, meaning that uh, there's two motors for your set of four carbs, set of four throttle bodies, so they can work independently of each other. And apparently, looking at the launch videos on track, it makes some amazing noises those throttle, throttle bodies so I'm looking forward to seeing if we can recreate those on the road but of course this is a this is a, a mental litre bike so uh, not quite sure I'm going to be able to show this off to its full potential on the road but I'll give it my best shot. Chopsy, roll the intro. So there she is again, the uh, Honda Fireblade. I mean, the Honda have, I think, thrown the kitchen sink at this now. To, to, to actually, to get it to perform in, in racing, they've basically thrown the kitchen sink at this. But one thing I'm really interested in um, is they've made changes to the ergonomics. A bit like, Panag bit like Ducati have with the Panigale. They've realized that making bikes a bit more comfortable makes them easier to ride and less fatiguing on track. So if a bike's easier to ride, you can ride it faster for longer. So this is what they've done on the blade as well. They've lowered the footrests a little bit because they're always very high before, and they've actually raised the handlebars a bit as well. Because I rode the last version of this, it was quite tall geared. They've also adjusted the gearing to make it a bit more suitable for roads. So all the changes they've made for track to make it less fatiguing on track work brilliantly on the road as well. So it makes it more, more, more comfortable sports bike. So I'm really interested to see what the ergonomics are like. This bike has had brand new tires just fitted. So I have to be a little bit careful. It's got brand new rubber front and rear. I think it's got 2000 miles on it, but it must've been on track. So they've chucked some uh, new tires on, but look at, look at it. I love the styling of this new blade. It looks very similar to the CBR 600 I was riding last week, doesn't it? And I'm also quite interested to see if you really need a litre bike. That CBR600RR, I absolutely love that little bike. I'll put a link to the video at the top. Do you really need to, to buy a litre bike for the road or are you better off with the, with the Super Sport? I think you're probably better for the Super Sport. I think this is going to be a big, scary motorcycle. Let's go find out. This bike is actually keyless, so to turn it on, you've got a little twiddler here. So you push it to turn it on like so and then you twist it to turn it off there we go i don't know why track bikes should be keyless I, I wouldn't i wouldn't want this keyless really when you go on track what do you do with the key you chuck it inside your leathers by the time you finish your sessions it's down by your ankle <laughs> yep it's rather fast it's quick that is much more, that feels much more bottom end than the old bike. As I say, they have re-geared this and I think that, I'm noticing that, that's picking up much better at the bottom end. But then it just, oh, it's just so fast, isn't it? So far, I mean, open this, when look at the speed I'm doing already, I can't even really open this up without speeding. And that, and that is part of the problems with these bikes on the road, isn't it? 
but it just feels so planted absolutely so planted the riding position it feels like a sports bike I, I have got quite a lot of weight on my wrists and the pegs are sort of moderately high better than the old bike I could maybe live with it but yeah you are still you are still lent forward quite a lot it actually doesn't feel any more spacious than the uh, the CBR 600 RR the riding position feels a little bit more aggressive than that bike even that bike maybe feels a little bit more comfortable than this big truck and gravel in the road I'm trying to find some roads which are enable me to open it up a little bit and also not go ridiculously fast a sort of moderately sized road yeah there's a little bit of winding up at the bottom of first yeah you, you can't even you can't even really give it full throttle oh the brakes are amazing full Brembo setup loads of support from the front end yeah really nice brakes just look through some of these cars yeah there's plenty of grunt plenty of low lane grunt I'm doing another one oh, we've got to blast past this auto sleeper no problem on this the riding position just lends itself to, to hanging off of the bike oh, it's, it's insane it's, it's it's going to be impossible to review this on the road for a YouTube video. I'm going to have to take it easy. I'm not... This, this is an in, <laughs> a lunatic machine. So much power. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. This is a handful. <laughs> This is a handful. We're going to be doing a comparison between this bike and the R1. I sort of got the R1 because, of course, the R1 is disappearing end of this year. It's not going to be available for sale in the UK. I don't know if that's just the UK or whether that's globally. But there's going to be no R1. There may be just for racing, but there's going to be no R1 for sale on the road. So I thought, I've got to have a final try of an R1. And uh, I thought, why I had the blade at the same time, you know, it's the old battle of the rivals, isn't it? The R1 versus the Fireblade, like the original daddies of the litre bikes. Put them head to head for the latest R1 and the latest blade. But I don't know, it's, it's going to be so hard to do a comparison of these bikes on the street because they're just so fast. Yeah, I think the riding position is, it feels quite similar, to be honest. I think you'd have to back to back it so maybe notice the differences they've made I get it, the pegs definitely feel a little bit lower so I remember I had to really pull your legs up onto the pegs on last year's bike the bars feel, still feel quite, you're quite forward and there's quite a lot of weight on your wrists so I can't really notice much difference with, with the bars but it's not too bad, I mean there's no cruise control I mean this is very much a bike built for racing you know, this is Honda has said it themselves, you know, they've made this new Fireblade so they can win, start winning some championships again. And, uh, you know, it's obviously it's performing much better in racing, but it has sort of compromised it as a road bike quite a lot. I mean, it's not even got cruise control on it. You know, they've not even put cruise control on it, which really, for a bike with this aggressive riding position, you know, is a bit of a must, really. <laughs> So up front you've got Olin's EC2 suspension, I think this is the EC2, or this could be the EC3 actually, this could be the new EC3 system. One thing I love about the Fireblade is just the massive belly pan, it's got that proper race belly pan, full belly pan going right under the bike. I really like my sports bikes to have a belly pan and I like the way all the fairing sort of curves into the radiator, the whole thing is just beautifully styled and these wings last year's wings were like integrated i actually i think i preferred the look of last year's wings if i'm honest but i don't know if these offer more downforce you know an external wing as opposed to an internal wing but i quite like the internal wings a bit more subtle to turn the blade on there's a little button here on the side 
of the bike and uh, that turns it on because there's no key, it's, it's keyless, so there's no key here. I think the idea of not having the ignition bell is so the air is fed into the air box unobstructed. Apparently that's the case. But even as you rev it, it's all sort of electronic whirring and gizmos as you operate the throttle. I guess that's those two motors. But um, yeah, it's an incredible looking bike, the Fireblade, isn't it? I love the little twin headlights. I love the, the how much, I'm always doing this lately, but you can literally get your whole arm up inside the nose of this thing. It's incredible. You, you could lose, you can literally lose things in there. You could keep your sandwiches in there, I suppose, at a push, couldn't you? I love the little details, like these little grills here, like the RCV MotoGP bikes. And it's the same on the tank as well, it's so racy. <laughs> these, little, these little grills like that, I've really got time for that. The swinging arm is apparently designed after, again, the RCV MotoGP bike. But it looks mean, doesn't it? I wish they did an aluminium frame and swinging arm addition in this bike though like the old school fire blades with the alley frame bring back aluminium frames bike manufacturers they look so much better than just these black cast ones this bike has a funky suede seat and i don't know if that's standard it's extremely thin you know it's it it's must be some sort of race seat i think but it's it's very very thin doesn't offer a great deal of support on the road but of course on track, it'll give you all the feedback you need. The dash on the blade is just very, very cool. All sorts of features in here. It does that thing where you get the, the red line reduces as the bike warms up like the BMW. So they've included that like warming of the, of the red line as the, as the bike warms. Uh, let's just go, the, I think the most interesting thing about this bike is this preload guide. This is a really clever little feature, I think. You basically enter your weight. Unfortunately, it only goes up to 220 pounds. It doesn't go heavy enough for me. And but of course, the bike's got electronic suspension, which adjusts the damping, but it doesn't adjust the preload. So this will, you enter your weight here, say you were lucky enough to weigh 140 pounds, it will tell you how many turns of preload you need to put on the shock and on the forks for your weight. I think that's a, I know you could have that in the manual, couldn't you? But what a nice way if you're at the track or whatever to have it here, but it only goes up to 220 pounds. I think I need it to go up to about 270 pounds. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do four turns. Other features on here, you can set all the suspension up from here. Obviously the suspension's fully electronic, so you can go through your different suspension modes and adjust what you want. As you can see, first glance, it looks rather complicated, doesn't it? But I've basically set my A1, A2 and A3 up to a, a hard version for track, a neutralish version for the road, and then a, a very soft version for comfort. Stability is what's most impressive here. Suspension is firm. Let me just see what mode. I've got it in A2, which is sort of the, the mid setting. And this Olin's kit is beautiful quite a lot of support there. I can feel exactly what the tarmac's doing. Oh, the blip is nice. It pulls the wheel out so, so easy. It feels like, it feels very different actually. It feels, well, not very different. Considerably different, I think, to last year's bike feels more angry, a bit more urgent, more racy, perhaps even a little bit harder. Maybe that, you know, maybe a little bit too angry. There's a few little tiny vibes, and I think more so than perhaps last year. I think the engine feels a little bit more raw than it did last year. I remember it being like a silky smooth sort of sewing machine feeling the old one. This definitely feels a bit more gruff. But I think in a good way and in an angrier way. That blipper is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, this thing belongs on the Isle of Man. We were going to take these to the Isle of Man, do a comparison. That's really what we should have done. not the sort of bike you can take your brain out 
it's not, you know, I'm not laughing, I'm not giggling, it's a very serious bike. And when you open it up, you're going serious speeds. You know, you've got to concentrate on this machine. It's not, it's not like a, it's not like the CBR 600, whereby you were just giggling, it was fun, it was manageable. This is a beast. This is an absolute beast. Hang the old knee. Not the knee sliders today. Run, 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 there he is. Let's have a little bit of a nice left hand, uh, hang off the bike a bit, get in position. The riding position is quite aggressive. I've got, uh, I'm getting a little bit of wrist, a little bit of elbow sort of pain already from leaning down onto these bars. It's more aggressive than the uh, the CBR 600 RR, I think. I am in full leathers, where I was in textiles on the 600. So you do tend to, it does make it a little bit more uncomfortable when you're in leathers compared to textiles. So there may be a bit of that involved. But I'm sure it is, I'm sure, I think the peg position is about the same as the 600. I think the bar position, you're leant forward a little bit more and there's a bit more weight on your wrist. So it's about 20% wrist weight I'd say on the 600 I'd say this is more like 30 on this one <laughs> listen to it oh was that that twin throttle body thing there I heard some I don't think it'll ever come out in the camera I don't know I don't think I've really heard that yet I have to say come on mate out of the way would you <laughs> oh my word, gone are the days of the old friendly fire blade, <laughs> gone are the days where it was a really friendly usable road bike, it's uh, yeah, it's definitely got its naughty head on these days, it's turned into a little bit of an animal, the suspension is, I can feel everything, but it, yeah, it's not crashy, it's very plush, but it is quite firm. Now I've, I've had more forgiving Olin suspension setups. This is uh, quite a firm one, I'd say. And if you load it up in top gear and cruise around at 50, it's, it's, it's quite happy like that. It's not as happy as the s 1000 R at just poodling around. I mean, I've called that bike in the past a, a sports tourer. You know, and it, it does feel like a sports tourer compared to this. It's just the weight on the wrists on this is a bit too much for me. A little bit too much. I mean, for me, it might be right for others, but once you load it up, it is very smooth. But I, I do think it has lost a little bit of that smoothness compared to the old bike. It's definitely a bit more gruff and a bit more raw feeling and very angry. <laughs> So if you want to see our R1 versus Fireblade comparison, you're going to have to subscribe, like the video if you wouldn't mind, keep the YouTube gods happy, and uh, we'll see you for that comparison soon. Thanks for watching, see you on the next one.